Hey everyone, we are back with our next installment. Hopefully we're going to be making some more progress on Damon Claw. And with me as always is Corey. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going? And as we discussed in a previous private Patreon video very recently, Corey and I decided that we're going to focus our development attention now that we've got the core of the game working quite well. We're going to stop on the forward momentum in the just getting everything in there, and we're going to start to polish what we have. We're going to work on what's called a vertical slice of the game, basically trying to get a demo with an opening menu screen, and then going into level one, and then level one boss, and then level two. Get that all as polished and perfected as possible before we move on to getting in the rest of the stuff. That'll give us sort of clarity. It'll give us time to really iron out and perfect the gameplay and those sorts of things before we move on and add in the final things that are left to go after we finish the vertical slice. And uh, toward those ends, we're going to be doing a lot more tweaking, bug fixing, and sort of updating and polishing the things that are already there. And so to start with, there were two bugs that Corey found during that Patreon video that uh, I fixed, and I wanted to quickly cover what those bugs were and how I fixed them. So the first bug that Corey spotted was that the gauntlet, which you should not start your level with, was there at the beginning, and I had thought I had fixed that bug before, but apparently it was sort of a half fix that was not reliable depending on the browser and how long your game level would take to start up. So let me just go into the gameplay events, and we will see if I do a search in events for char for character maps. We'll see. Yeah, and this was, yep, go ahead, I was going to say, this was like yeah. a pure visual bug. Like, right. like it was his character map was mm -hmm. uh, not correctly uh, yeah, displaying. Yeah. Turn it, hiding the gauntlet. So he would start right. with a full on magical gauntlet looking like it was equipped, even though he would not have those actual magical moves. It just visually, yeah. at the beginning of every level, he should start without the gauntlet and with just the bracelet on his uh, wrist. So. Before, the way I had it was I just had a general check for is the timer of the level. So let me show you how that looks. So I'll add another condition and it would be under system and compare time. And I had it to something like greater than a half a second. And then um, if D gauntlet is zero and this time is greater than half a second, then append that character map and then set the gauntlet to zero. And I added that as a bug fix last time and tried it and it worked, but something happened and I assume something was just slowing down. Oh, it was on your computer, maybe that's why. So, but in any case, the problem is apparently the spider, uh, the spider objects will not accept a character map to be uh, appended to it until it is done initializing, and that can take apparently more than a half a second when the lay the layout starts. Right. So it was not a reliable bug fix, but then I remembered one way, one foolproof way to make sure that the spider object is done initiating is by default it always starts playing the default animation once it's done initiating. And you'll see here what I did was I took the spider object itself and I checked if it's current current time in, in the uh, timeline of playing the animation is greater than a, I just arbitrarily picked 100 milliseconds which I think is a tenth of a second into the thing so if it's been playing for longer than a tenth of a second I could probably change that to a hundredth of a second and it would probably still work because right. it'll just consider itself at zero until the animation is actually playing which it can't do until it's initialized and this seems like a foolproof way to make sure that the appending of the character map will actually take effect. Uh, so that did fix that one, and we'll, we'll know, we'll verify again when I actually play test the level later on. Uh, and then what was the other bug? Um, I think it was, um, 
restart was it restarting yes. the level yep. um if you die and the level restarts then what was happening was the uh, health bar would not update so it would still look like it was empty from back when you died even though you actually had four hit points it wasn't updating it wasn't displaying and i realized what the issue was is i had the events in gameplay events at start of layout run the um it's called a function to update let's actually see um, the function itself is probably in here i would assume so there we go on function update else so it's 118 so here it is on update health function and this is what actually updates the thing so the problem was in the level one or level two events i had something that was resetting the uh the variable for the hit points but then in the global events i had the event that at start of layout uh ran that thing mm -hmm. ran the uh, function but the problem was because they were in two different um event sheets and they both said start of event one of them has to happen first and mm -hmm. the update was happening before the 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 event that said give the actual hit points the uh the value of four so it was updating them visually when it was still at zero <laughs> and then mm -hmm. does that make sense and yeah, then yeah. and then so it was updating it at zero and then the event that actually set the value to zero took place so they were happening in the wrong order and the obvious uh solution which is also important for another reason is to just remove the calls to the hud updates from the gameplay events event sheet and put them specifically in the start of layout of the event sheet for that particular level because remember when you go from level like after defeating the level one boss to level two you do want the hit points to refresh to four hit points and the same thing from going from like the opening menu the main menu to level one you want to start with the full four hit points however when you're going from level one to the level one boss fight you want to carry over the hit points that you've you still have based on your fight up to the boss you don't get the free replenish before the boss fight right so this way we have full control and we're making sure things happen in the right order so the calls to the updating of the hud and the hit points are all in one event now per event per uh, lay, uh, layout or level and that's going to make sure that it happens in the right order and that we have the exact control we need per level all right, so we might as well just quickly test these bugs to make sure they are indeed fixed. And at, at the same time, I will remind everyone of some other thing that I found that I wanted to fix. So here we are. We are in level one. We have to get to some enemies. Oh, yeah, I should be dying. That's a very useful slow flying falcon. There we go. <laughs> and you see now they are properly updated, the health bar. And if I get hit, it should go down to three, proving that it is actually accurate to the hit points. And now I will earn the magic gauntlet. And you can see I'm starting without the gauntlet. So that's right. also working uh, properly. And I'm also apparently a ninja. All right. Doing <laughs> well for a change. All right, so the other issue was the uppercut move had no horizontal range to the attack. So it was yeah. extremely unfun. You couldn't see right there. I haven't fixed it yet. So you could be inside the guy and you're just not hitting him. Um, so we want to fix that for sure. And that's going to be the next thing we're going to do. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, as close as you were, it seemed like you definitely Something should have hit that guy. Yeah, yeah, that made me think that it could be more than just a collision box. We might not actually have an event that checks specifically for the flaming uppercut 
Um, let me look into the Spider awesome. Spider animation itself. So there's obviously the box itself. It's called Attack Uppercase, and that is the same. It should be as the same as with any attack move. So let me just find his normal. What is it called? Punch. Um, uh, uppercut. Drop. Okay, drop kick has one. Yeah, that's the same exact name. Punch. There it is. And the frame that has the attack. Yep, attack. So it's the right box. So they're just presumably. But anyway, what we did, we'll look into that shortly. But so what I did was I just went into the uppercut animations and I made these boxes have a better range because they were very tight before. And uh, so I did expand them. Um, but it could be that there's also uh, a lack of events or the way the events are currently coded or worked out. They're not um, they're not working. So let's let's find out what happened. Uh, then again, I I know. Maybe it's specifically for the humanoid enemies because I know I've successfully mm. uppercutted flying enemies out of the air and it worked. Right. So interesting. Let's see. Um, so we need to go into the spriter first things first. Go into the spriter layout, drag the updated. Oops, I thought I turned off. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, oops, not there. Uh, volume mixer. Oh, apparently the reset messed that up. But anyway, you couldn't hear it, Corey, but there was a very loud bling Windows uh, <laughs> yeah. sound. Um, let's see here. Um, Spider events. Okay. Oh, and it's updated with your new artwork. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so Corey, uh, since the last time we imported the Spriter file, Corey made nice new cleaned up versions of the larger file effects for the air uh, bash and the uppercut. So that's why those images updated. And then let's see, so just make sure there's no other older hero. So here's the older one. Now there should be only one. And it includes the new images. That's good. Okay, so now the thing to do is to quickly look at the events and we'll go into gameplay events first and we will check uppercut. Alright, okay, so we're checking specifically for uppercut. This might be why. We'll see if, obviously that should only be in level 1 anyway for the flaming uppercut. So right. it might not be a problem. Let's clear. And let's go into level one specific events. Um, I guess events. one way to test that too is, you know, when you get into the gameplay, just try to do a regular uppercut first on a humanoid guy and yeah. then try to do the flame one and see if it's specific just to the flame one. Right. Something along those lines. So here we are again. This is very interesting. We have... So there's attack, but look, it's checking specifically for the animation uppercut, which is not going to be the case if he has the magic power. Right. Uh, so let's clear and let's go to line 100. Does this have anything to do with the magic? And the other question is, why are there two? Mm, yeah, they, to me, they look identical. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, it almost looks like, and this is just a guess, but I had created these specifically for the fire, and I didn't get around to renaming these mm. to the fire uppercut animation names. Yeah, but that's the case. Uh, okay, so we have one, two, and three, in fact, which is not a problem. We'll just have to copy one more. And so... I'll just use this trick, double click, so we can grab the exact name to make sure there's no chance for, you know, slightly different names causing it to not work. And then you just change the number. So this will at least make it work for now, but this does not make it do more damage or anything like that yet, obviously, because they're just clones of each other. Right. So the question is, 
do we want to right so right now we're just subtracting one hit point it seems to me like we've got to at least increase that uh, two hit points uh, how many hit points do the falcon guys have I've never that's a good question uh, they might only have two to begin with we can check that by going into the spider object and uh, where's regular Birdman? Yeah, hit points too. Yeah. Um, and that'll all. I mean, we'll be working on those numbers, I guess. As yeah, we, yeah. We but perfect the gameplay. The, the other thing that just dawned on me. So we also have Birdman Alt, which is the one that throws the weapon, and mm -hmm. he does have higher hit points. But I just realized the events we're doing right now are specifically for Bird. Oh, was that the difference? Come to think of it. Did we just not notice one was for Birdman and one was for Birdman Alt? I bet you that's the case. Uh, level 1 events. Yeah, see, Birdman Alt. Oh no, they're, oh no, that's because I copied. Yep, so this one is not Birdman um, Alt. This is regular Birdman, and this right. is Birdman Alt. So what I want to do is I want to make that apply to any Birdman, and I think they are both considered humanoid enemy. I think they're both in that group. So if we check down here under, what is it called? Families? Humanoid? We could see Birdman and Birdman Alter in there. So hopefully what I can do... Well, I just went into the spider events again. Level 1 events. There we go. So hopefully what I can do to save time is just replace... And actually, I could do that with the things for dropkick and stuff like that as well at a later time if I want to clean it up and remove. Let me think, is there any reason why to not do this? I really don't think so. I think it should be good. Yeah. So I should be able to replace object, replace bird man with humanoid enemy. Mm hmm. And so now we will only need the three events. We won't have to make six events. One for one set for Birdman and one set for Birdman Alt. Right. right. Replace object Birdman Alt with humanoid enemy. And same thing here. Replace object Birdman Alt humanoid enemy. Okay, so let's test if this works or if I broke it. All right. Spider layout. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so first we'll test regular uppercut. Uppercut, like I said, it always worked against the birds, so it's not much of a test yet. Let's get to a bird man. Uppercut. Oh, that's hmm. that still did nothing. That's interesting. Hmm. Um, all right, let me yeah. get a gauntlet power and see if the flaming ones now... Oops. Well, let me die first. Waste <laughs> some time. All right, let's get that gauntlet right off the bat. Or miss. Oops. Uppercut. Yes. Okay, so the flaming ones now work. So the question then is, why does the non-flaming one which is in the regular gameplay events why mm -hmm. does that not work so let's go clear search scroll up to the top and gameplay events and we look for uppercut overlapping oh, okay so that's only for the winged enemies okay well that's simple enough so we're gonna Clear search again. We're going to go into level one events, which uh, is right here. And we're going to look for uppercut. And we are simply going to copy this first one. And we are going to replace uppercut fire one with just uppercut. And we are going to subtract only one from hit points. And because this works for just humanoid enemies in general, theoretically, and this should work in all levels because you have regular uppercut in all levels, we should be able to put that in gameplay events. 
So mm -hmm. let me just do a quick search again. Yep, only flying enemies. Okay. Yep, so we trigger the uppercut, but we don't have something universally that makes it work against humanoid enemies. Oh, that's the only issue, which I know how to fix later on. But the only mm -hmm. issue is we're playing Birdman hit when you get hit, and obviously you don't want the goat men to make the Birdman hit sound. Right. But we can actually, that's, that's going to be really easy to fix, and it's worth it. We'll deal with that at another date. So let's test level one again. Oh, yeah, I have to test the regular uppercut. What was I doing? Uppercut, yes. All right. Yeah, it's really fun to uppercut the winged enemies from down below to get your magical, uh, earn your magical energy orbs. And flaming uppercut, and that works too. Fantastic. Um, I'm thinking it would be really nice to have like a one frame variant animation for the enemies for when you hit them with the flaming thing so that when they go flying back they look like they're also on fire yeah i i thought about that yeah. even for the i think we did something similar for the lightning effects for the bird or uh, for the uh for the owls in level two and i oh right i had considered that uh with the flame stuff that you know yeah. could, you know, we, we already did it for the birds so yeah we might do something like that. Yeah, your new uh, flame art looks great for the uppercuts and stuff, by the way. All right, so that's looking great. So the next thing that we're going to do is get, we had discussed adding a frame, a visual treatment extremely similar to the hit points to this cooldown meter that basically doesn't allow you to spam your powerful magic uh, attacks. Your gauntlet needs to build back up. Uh, a charge of magical energy before you can use your magical attacks and every time you do a magical attack it drains it to some varying degree depending on the attack so and even your regular punches because they use that so if you drain it you go back to your regular non gauntlet moves mm -hmm. and there we go uh, so I quickly created placeholder art that eventually Corey or I one of us is going to replace and so it's just a sprite and it's got two animations and it's just one frame each there's the normal default animation and then there's one i called nope which is uh, just the red background variant and i created that in the lay uh, the layer called hud which is set to global and so we have to be in layout uh, or frame yeah no it's called layout i think in construct yeah layout level one and because if i try to do it in level two if i go to hud i think i can't yeah i can't edit it or add anything into this layer because it's a global one that's overridden mm -hmm. by whatever we do in level one's layer hud so i added that in there and we need to move it right there and then we need to do some z order fixing so right here you can see the Z order bar. So we're going to drag the cool off meter on top and then we have to fix its size to fit within the frame. So now it matches its visual style and placement with that. And then the other thing we're going to do right now, this is, it's a background, uh, a tiled background object that we're using. And right now it just tiles itself and it just has an arbitrary eight by eight size. But what we can do, I know that the actual meter when it's full is 40 pixels. And uh, 8, I think, is actually what we want. Is it 8 or 10? I can't remember now. I think it's 10, actually. I think it... Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. We'll see in a second. Um, but anyway, let me pick this color. And... All right, so it is 8. Hold on. Why is the height set to negative? That's really weird. At some point I dragged it the wrong way, apparently. All right, anyway, so it's eight. Okay, so let's fix this yet again. Resize and we'll just eight. 
And then let's add the drop shadow into it, which mm -hmm. I'll just use the rectangle again and just darken that color a bit. Uh, two pixels by two pixels. I think that's two. No, that's just one. Okay, two by two. There we go, and now it matches that visually and everything should still function. So let's save our progress and I'll just really quickly play level one again just to see if it all works the way it's expected to work. There we go, filling up. It's got its drop <laughs> shadow, very nice. So now that that's all working, what we're going to do is add a little functionality to it that's uh, actually going to take a little while because it's based on per magic move, and that is also mm, based is on... That, is yep. that... Oh, never mind. It does the regular bash if you don't have enough Exactly. Magic. Yeah, and, right. And yeah. that's the thing we want to reinforce and communicate to the player. That's why there's the nope version of that frame. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, obviously, that's not going to happen unless your meter is at least partially empty, meaning you don't have enough magical energy built up to do that move. So we want to remind people that's the problem. That's why their magic move isn't coming out. So eventually there'll be a sound, and that frame behind the meter will flash that red color in the background to visually remind you you're trying to do something that you don't have enough, like this meter isn't full, filled enough for you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think for the sake of this video, we'll only add it to level one and it'll be the same exact process for level two. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is go into the level one events and we're going to need to basically alter the event that allows for the regular uppercut well that's step one i think i realized right. there's sort of an, a hidden bug from the last time we did this here's the event that lets you do the flaming uppercut and as you can see it checks for the fact that you have the gauntlet in the first place and that you have enough meter in the cool off meter which is just called magic meter in the variables but so i'm going to copy this check right here and I'm going to go into the gameplay events, which is global to the game. Hmm, I actually might not be able to do that, come to think of it. Yeah, so basically there's a couple issues going on right now. The way the event is in global events, and I should be searching to, for uppercut here. Okay. So right now, where does it... Okay, so it checks for whether or not you have the gauntlet, and you just... It only will let you do the regular uppercut if you don't have the gauntlet at all. Right. And that's not a good thing. Oh, that's good. I did. I was smart enough to make a variable called uppercut requirement. So that's great. So I can do what I wanted to do. Okay, so we're going to add, add a new event above. And we're going to, for now, I'm just going to do uh, start of layout. I'm going to replace that with the thing I had in the clipboard there. So magic meter has less than done. So if you don't have enough magic energy, we're going to make this an ore block and we're going to move this here. So if you don't have enough magic energy or you don't have the gauntlet at all, and these other things are true, meaning the player triggered the uppercut, mm -hmm. then it's going to do the regular uppercut. So that's good. So mm -hmm. now the last thing we need to do is just I'll add a sub-event. So I'm just going to add blank sub-event down here, and I'm going to paste this again because this will still be true. So he didn't have enough energy. Actually, I'll copy this too. So this will say greater than so you do have you do have the gauntlet but you didn't have enough magical energy mm -hmm. and all of this will have been done regardless so he will have done the regular uppercut so now all we need to do is make the cooldown frame we're going to set its animation to nope 
And then one last thing, which I'll just add down here, which is cool down meter on finished. Nope. We're going to set that animation back to default. And nice. set animation default. And eventually we'll add a sound effect also to right here. Mm -hmm. But that's for another day. So let's test this. And right now, that should have fixed the bug that we could have never found with the uppercut not coming out. Because I think right now the magic meter comes back fast enough that it would never be an issue. Okay, so regular uppercut still works fine. And it doesn't do the nope when it shouldn't. That's good. I, just I think the sound it. effect should be uh, someone saying, oh. <laughs> I'll go back to our previous video of you going all about the uh, slow flying <laughs> falcon and we'll, we'll just use that sample what's going on here mm, it looked like i was yeah hitting him but it was going through so we'll have to see what's up with that uh but anyway i have the move and it's uppercutting and it's doing it's the regular one Yep, yeah, yep, it's yep. staying okay. red for a while. I mean, okay, it is working, but the animation playing is way too slow. Yeah. So let's just see what's up there. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, I see. I see. <laughs> this is an amazing problem. This is very cool. All right. So, let me, so we're, we want 60. So, here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. This and this are true. Right? Mm -hmm. Then it checks if this is also true and it does this, which is trigger the actual uppercut. But also... Every event tick, every loop of the game, if this and this is true, and this and this is true, then it's going to keep setting the animation back to nope. Right. So the problem is that, yeah, so what we need to do is do this. All right? So only, right. If, it was tr only if this was true enough as well to make the uppercut come out, that's the only time it's going to do the nope. So because this was outside like this, so long as these two were true and this was true, it didn't matter if the uppercut was just initiated right. because these things were still true for much longer than that one instant initiation of the attack. It was just looping for that whole duration. And that's why the animation was getting stuck so long. So now we probably, I probably made the animation too short. Um, so I'll at least bring it back to, we'll try two. That should be, I think, a half a second if I've got my bad artist math working properly here. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, level one. Let's test that again. Okay. Now it'll flash way too fast. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's still acting exactly as it had, which is very confusing to me. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Go, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's because you didn't put it back where. Oh, it's it's supposed, it's, to, uh, it's supposed oh, to be yeah, nested yeah. under here. It's supposed to be a sub event. Yeah, yeah I just okay. forgot to fix. It. <laughs> <laughs> I explained it and broke it while I was explaining. That's rich. Okay. <laughs> Eventing while fatigued always leads to interesting stuff. It leads to loopy code. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right. Yes, that's what we want. Yep, very nice. Okay. 
All right, so now it's just a matter of getting the sound effect in. And we can always add additional visual effects later. But right mm -hmm. now, it's all about getting it functioning the way it belongs, which it now does. So there's just a few more moves that we need to apply it to. Well, there's the air bash and the um, the the what is the drop kick that becomes the other thing, the uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, flaming meteor thing. All right, so let's look for these other. Uh, we're going to go into level one. Uh, level one events, I mean, level one events, and now we look for air bash. We need to look for the move actually being triggered. None of these are it, which is strange. Oh, okay. Uh, nope, that's not it either. Oh, maybe it's not called air bash. Always good to have your spider thing open. Mm hmm. Oh, no, because it's definitely... Oh, okay, that's why. Because Air Bash always plays... It's it's just changing what sprite is being spawned. Right? Right, right. So, let's look at... So, is that in gameplay events, then? Let's look at Air Bash. On event Air Bash triggered. Okay, interesting. Power level is greater... Power type, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this formula, this decides if it's the flaming look or the electricity look and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's all right here. So air bash triggered, power level is greater than zero, and you have enough. All right, so all we need is to add... We'll add a sub-event. We'll drag it up here. And we will just take this and because in this case air bash is definitely triggered already and this is a sub event so this won't happen it won't keep looping and happening even when air bash is not triggered because it is a sort of child of that specific split second event of a trigger from spriter mm -hmm. but this needs to go less than so is this less than then all we need to do is switch the cool off meter frame animation to nope all right so that should work for air bash so the thing that's left is the drop kick and that definitely or i shouldn't i should never say definitely when i'm this tired because i can often be wrong but level one events it's theoretically got to be here and the animation is called shoot downward so we're going to look for shoot downward Shoot downward, here it is. Power level is greater and all that fun stuff. So, but in this case, it does the drop kick instead. So we do want to come to think of it, go into gameplay events and look for drop kick. Oh, I guess it's not exactly called drop kick. Maybe there's a little dash or something. Yep. Okay. And here it is, here is where it gets triggered. Power level equals zero. So that we need to fix just like we did with the other one. So we're gonna add a new event above and we're going to check. And we're going to compare, let's see, what is it? Power level is equal to zero. I could have just copied that, but what we really need, we're going to make this an OR block, which we're not even going to be able to tell yet because there's only one thing. We need to go back into level one, just because level one events, I mean, just because this is quicker for me. And it's called shoot downward. My statement of it being quicker is becoming less true by the second. Um, <laughs> There, this is what I wanted to copy, so I didn't have to recreate that formula and fish for variables and stuff like that and remember the name. So now we're going to do drop kick to get back here. And wait a minute, am I in the wrong thing? Uh, yeah, I need to be in game, gameplay events. Drop kick. Yep, okay, so it's, I guess, 60. 
Yep. Okay. Paste that in and make this less than. And then make this like this. So if you don't have enough energy or you don't have the gauntlet at all yet and you initiate the move, then it's going to do drop kick and then add like sub event. And this is a child of it, which is what we want. And we're going to do that like this uh, is lower than. And we're going to do the cool off. And I think we will be finished with once I just really quickly test this. Set animation to nope. I think we're good. All right, so quick test. Level one. Make sure I didn't break drop kicking before the gauntlet. Same thing with the air bash. Since I added that stuff to the air bash is fine. Drop kick is fine. Oh wait, no, there was a problem. It flashed red. Did you see that? Right. Was yeah. It during without the air bash or, was or anything. It, it was during drop kick. Okay. So why did that happen? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, gameplay events. This one should be here and should be greater than. Simple oversight. Okay. This way, this will only take effect if you have the gauntlet. Right. Yep. Silly oversight. All right. Testing again. Okay. Good. Up. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I made the same mistake with Air Bash, I think. Wah, wah. Wah, wah returns. All right, let's see. That is Air Bash. Do I need to be looking in probably gameplay events? Oh, that's right. It is the thing that spawns it, which is definitely in gameplay events. That spawns the um, attack blur, basically. Mm -hmm. So Air Bash here right here dummy they did made the same mistake twice parlor roll yes is greater yep okay let's try again <laughs> air bash yes okay those both All definitely right. did not have enough energy so now let's see if it works properly when you do have the gauntlet but not enough energy. Ouchie. Uppercut. Uppercut. All right. Yep. Okay, that worked. And it did the drop kick instead. That's great. Drop. It's going to drop kick. Yep. Uppercut. And what's the other one? The air bash. Uh oh. Oh no, it's doing it. It's the, You can always air bash, but you. Um, it does the red thing and. And of course, we will change it so you can't spam uh, floating in the air. <laughs> like, I thought we had made it in the past so that... Oh, that's it. It'll probably work properly if you... Uh, yeah, that's it. Right now, like, let me reset. If you mm -hmm. do the air bash with no gauntlet, you no longer hover in the air with time paused. Right. But we need to make it so that if you don't have enough magical energy but you do have the gauntlet you should also not air pause basically does that make sense yeah yeah i'll see if i can quickly fix that last bit so here we're triggered time scale to one here it's going to or somewhere it's it's got to set the time scale where is it doing that Set time scale to one. Where does it pause time if you do have the power? That's confusing. Is it because this is a uh, clear search? Let's look for that again. I should have paid attention to what the number was. It's right here. Air bash. Okay. Actually, what I should do, I guess, is just search for time scale. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Air bash. Okay, interesting. Stuck in move is zero. B2. All right, so this is air bash. This is where it gets... Okay, and then if your power level is greater, then it, this is the time pause stuff. Mm -hmm. So all we need to do is add that same check for the air bash requirement magic. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to 
allow it to pause time. Let's see, where's the air bash? Air bash. Right here. So if you have enough energy and you have the gauntlet, then it will also pause time. Right, right. Let's see. Yes. Okay. That should all be good. Let's double check. No more spamming air bash in the air a million times. <laughs> all right. So yeah, you can get it out a few times, but I, I can. We can also in Spider add a follow through to the animation so that you can't spam it as quickly as well. Right. Oh, wow. I, we found a new bug. I can't move horizontally now. Whoa. Did I wake myself up? Yeah. Well, there's clearly an event that makes it ignore control input and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. That made me think I think I know why. So I paused recording for a bit so that I could try to get my head around this bug better. And I really think it's about this. And I toggled that off, but I've been playing and we just, I can't recreate this bug regardless. So there are many cases when you're making a game like this where lots of different collisions and there are several things that either stop time or stop your ability to input things and other things that turn it back on, like getting hit and finishing your getting hit animation. So many things can be happening that the best way when, and thank goodness we were recording for this video, because I'm gonna go back and watch the footage and see what exact sequence of events led to that bug where I couldn't control myself afterwards. And mm -hmm. that'll probably help a lot. So those were the big things we wanted to do for this video. We're gonna leave this bug until after I have a chance to watch the video. And whether I fix the bug directly on the next video or not, I'll at least, like I did in the beginning of this video, explain what was causing the bug and how I ended up fixing it. But for now, to remind myself, I'll disable this. And I could, just to show everyone that doesn't use Construct yet, you can always add a comment. So we could actually say, I think the bug is caused here, for example. And if I had many bugs going, I would definitely be more descriptive of what the bug I'm talking about it is. But just to give you the idea, uh, construct users or new or people that might get into construct, that's one of the things you can do. There's also a way, which I really ne I never use, but I really should, you can also ah toggle bookmark and then i'm pretty sure there's a way to skip right to bookmarks which is really useful i'm sure yeah toggle bookmark ah look at that previous bookmark next bookmark nice so very handy so I, i've got to start using that more i'm sure there's even a key for it but yeah something i've never used but anyway useful stuff Corey, what do you think? The, there was one other thing, and this definitely doesn't have to happen during the video. In mm -hmm. fact, yeah, maybe we'll just save it for outside the video. But the other thing we're going to do, because we're really trying to polish everything up, is Corey pointed out something really important, and that is when you start the game, and especially when, when you've died and you want to restart and get back into the level and back into gameplay, right now it's pretty excruciatingly slow to go through the cinematic and have to press the button and wait for the fade in and fade out between every screen of the cinematic and, and between the menu screen and the cinematic. All of those things have to happen much faster, have to be much snappier. And I'm probably also going to add the ability to skip the entire cinematic if you press a different button than the button that just goes to the next screen in the cinematic. Right. So, but those don't really have to happen on video. It's just tweaking numbers. Maybe in the next video, I'll recap how it was done to tweak those numbers but it's really mm -hmm. straightforward and i don't want to make this video overly long so i think we will end it there unless you had any other last minute thoughts or things you wanted to do Corey. no i believe that's it all right awesome thanks everyone as always for watching